Hey guys, let's talk about this bomb cyclone. Winter survival is an important educational piece to surviving period. I mean, a lot of people have talked about the people who have passed away as if their lives didn't matter. I mean, a lot of people don't know about this thing called preparedness. I mean, you're subscribed to this channel likely because you do care. But let's talk about some of the best practices and tips that you should use in the event of another bomb cyclone or just a winter blast, a storm. You know, this thing originated in Siberia and a week prior to it hitting uh, the northwest part of the country and flowing into the United States, we knew it was coming. Every weather organization was talking about it. But how many people actually pay attention to that kind of stuff? In Erie County, which is in Buffalo, New York, right now, 36 different people have died in one county. 17 of the 36 were found dead outside of their homes, dead in snowbanks up to 10 feet tall, dead in their vehicles, and that's disturbing. One gal, 22 years old, on her way home from work, driving, stopped because she got locked in to a situation where she was stuck because her two-wheel drive car could not go through the blizzard. She had no visibility. She even videoed her family because she still had a reception that she was stuck. She called the cops four hours later because she was still communicating with her family. The police never showed. The police, when dealing with catastrophe, didn't have the capability nor capacity to deal with this level of disaster. 400 calls in Erie County went unanswered. They found her body in her vehicle the following day. 22 years old, six minutes from her home. Six minutes from her home. It's devastating. It's tragic. More likely she died from either exposure from hypothermia or she died from carbon monoxide poisoning. So what are the things that you could do to be best prepared, especially if you interoperate in and out of a vehicle, whether that's commuting, going to work, leaving work? Um, it's best to have the extension of your rucksack or your individual carry extended into your vehicle because it, it's a lot bigger rucksack. So let's talk about it. Number one, spare fuel. Your vehicle is a generator. It is a rolling generator. It has power that uses the alternator to regenerate the power in the vehicle. And that vehicle provides minor, I would say minor insulation, but also provides heat. If you have a tenth of a tank of gas, that is your current capability. Keep your vehicle topped off with gas. Also understand if you are locked in your vehicle and you're trying to weather the storm literally, if the muffler or exhaust of that vehicle is covered in snow, it will back through the vehicle, that exhaust, creep into the crevices of that vehicle, which is not sealed off, by the way, and you will die of carbon monoxide poisoning. You'll simply go to sleep and you'll never wake up. That's likely what happened to this 22-year-old woman in Erie County, New York. So... Make sure you have the understanding of that and you can clear the exhaust. Spare fuel is important because if you have spare fuel, you're extending your capability. It could also be a extended fuel tank. Most vehicles, especially uh, Land Cruiser Series, uh, off-road Jeeps, um, anything that you take overlanding or off-roading likely has an option to extend your fuel. You have a pickup truck? Certainly, between 30 gallons and 75 gallons, you can get both underneath the vehicle and in the truck bed extended fuel uh, capability. So do that, please. Um, go bags. Go bags are important. I have a go bag from Philcraft Survival that we sell. It's a panel pack that goes on the back of the seat for ready access to life-saving gear, but also could be zipped up and detached to be able to displace from your vehicle. So bugging in having the equipment, and bugging out, taking that equipment with me if I had to displace. If this gal had the wherewithal because she understood her circumstance, she could have disconnected that, those straps, put the backpack on her back, and then made the haul to her home that was only six minutes away, guys. That would have been a 45-minute a, a walk in the snow, um, but she didn't, unfortunately. Go bags are also essential in carrying all the staples of survival, so let's talk about a few. One, survival gear. That starts with water. That starts with insulation. Uh, shelter would be the first thing because 
um, shelter would provide you protection from exposure to the elements. But in this case, if you're in your vehicle, that shelter is caveated with being able to retain your core body temperature. So a bivy sack, have a bivy sack, which is a compressed mylar line, typically a uh, sleeping bag that could retain your core body temperature. Have both. If you have an empty trunk, you have the capacity and space and prove your capability by putting equipment that you could utilize. Wool blankets, um, cold weather sleeping bags, mylar space blankets, which are very small, do that as well. Also, you want to have the ability to make a fire. That is not a ferro rod that's this big. That's a propane lighter, a big lighter, hurricane matches. And then working down your contingencies, you might even have the ferro rod. The Philcraft Survival Ferro Rod's this big because we want to have a functional ferro rod that could actually start a fire. Not a little minimalist fire rod that just sparks a little spark, right? I want to be able to ignite a fire. And in a snowstorm, you need the best that you can get. Also, on top of that, you need to have maintenance and recovery. That is super important. The most important aspect in winter survival for maintenance and recovery isn't just the ability to remove the vehicle from the situation. In this case of this 22-year-old, she likely, no matter what she had, was going to get out of uh, being stuck because she was in one of the worst winter storms generationally that we've ever experienced. But if she had the ability to start or kickstart her battery because she had a battery tender or charger, then that would help her. Because if her vehicle got shut off uh, for some reason and she couldn't restart it because it was so cold, that would be enough power to influx to be able to start it to keep it running, to keep her core body temperature warm. Also, last but not least, communications. Why is communication important? Well, if nobody knows where you are, then how can help get to you? You are your own first response, guys. No one's coming to save you, so you have to save yourself. So have the emergency comms plan. Have the ham radio. The RF capability to let people know that are monitoring ham radios emergency management included, of where you're located. Also, be able to communicate via SAT. Now, most infrastructure, including cell phone towers, are going to get shut down because when the power collapses, so do the tower networks. You can't send data and SMS or make phone calls over a network that doesn't exist. Satellite communication, even in a winter storm, will still exist. So if you have the ability, whether it's an inReach, a Zolio, a Garmin device, to send an SOS message or communicate satellite, you could put out the all call. I need help. Here's my grid location. Most of those devices also have the tethering of your grid location. If you don't have Onyx, you should get Onyx. Why is Onyx important? Because you could identify where your lat long or your current location is. People in the middle of a storm are not going to be able to use general directions if you can't even see where you're potentially stuck at. So have the ability to communicate lat long. Also, I'll caveat this by that is a short list. There are many more things, including first aid. The list goes on, but I'm curious to what your list includes. What did I miss? Leave that below. I want to understand what you use personally or what you think you should use. That's what the comment section is for hit the subscribe, hit the notification tab. Also, my book Prepared comes out really, really soon. Down below is the link. If you're supporting this channel, you're supporting Phil Craft Survival, all the things that we do, make sure you hit that link. That book's going to drop really soon. I got some really cool incentives for you guys as this book drops June 6th of this year, but you guys can get to it and pre-order it now below. Thanks for all the support, guys. Till next time, peace out.